Welcome to All Around Fit Stability Ball Workout. The exercises in this program are designed to strengthen your muscles and improve your posture and balance. The ball is an excellent tool for challenging your core muscles, that is the muscles of the abdomen, back, and hips, and also for challenging your stability. Whether you're seated on the ball, standing, holding the ball, with your belly on the ball, or your back with your legs on the ball. Go at your own pace in this exercise program and make sure that you don't attempt the more advanced movements until you feel ready. Make sure the area around your mat is clear of tripping hazards and obstacles such as furniture that you might bump into. I prefer to wear athletic shoes with rubber soles so my feet can better grip the mat. If you prefer bare feet, that's fine. I don't recommend socks as your feet might slip. Make sure that when you're seated on the ball, your thighs are parallel to the floor. If the ball is too big or too small, you may find that it's difficult to maintain proper positioning when you're doing the movements. For most people, a 55 centimeter ball such as this will work out fine. However, if you're under five feet tall, you'll probably need a smaller ball. If you're over 5'8 or 5'9, you may need a larger ball. So if you're ready, let's go. Let's start by sitting on the ball with our feet about hip distance apart, knees and toes pointing straight ahead, shoulders relaxed back and down. Lift the crown of the head towards the ceiling. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Nice deep breath in and exhale. On your next inhale, gently tilt your pelvis forward. When you tilt the pelvis forward, the lower back is going to extend a little bit. As you exhale, draw the navel in, tilt your pelvis back. The lower back will flatten around. Inhale, tilting forward. Exhale, tilting back. The ball will also move. As you tilt the pelvis forward, the ball tilts back. As you tilt the pelvis forward, you're going to push the ball forward. Just keep this gentle. Keep it comfortable for your spine. And we'll take one more set. Now bring the pelvis back to neutral, sits bones pointing straight down through the center of the ball, and we'll take those hips side to side. Imagine the sits bones, those are the bony points at the base of the pelvis, pushing the ball from side to side. To test whether your upper body is moving as well, take the arms out to the sides, shoulders relaxed, and try to keep your upper body still, moving just from the waistline down. And we're going to take those side-to-side -side movements into circles. If this bothers the knees, you might just stay with the side-to-side -side motion. And let's reverse the circles, keeping the shoulders relaxed. If the arms and shoulders get tired, you can always bring your hands back to your hips. We're going to take this into a figure eight motion. Again, circling at the waistline, trying to keep the upper body nice and still. Breathe comfortably. Now reverse those figure eights. Feeling the muscles in the abdominals working to create this motion. One. And come on back to center and relax your arms down by your sides. Let's take a stretch for the side of the body. We're going to reach that right arm up as you inhale. And exhale, lifting up and over. Try to stay two-dimensional here. Shoulders facing forward. Inhale, center. Exhale, down. Left arm reaches up and over. Exhale, center and down. One more time, each side. Reaching up. Last time. Let's take it into a spine twist, bringing the fingertips to the center of the chest, about sternum height. Relax the shoulders. Inhale, sitting up nice and tall. Exhale, twist to the side. Again, working up from the waistline up. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist right. And center. And twist. Try to keep the knees facing straight ahead so the movement isn't shifting your lower body. Now you can add a more advanced version that includes a stretch for the shoulders, reaching the arms open. 
Inhaling center. Exhale, reach open. Inhale, center. One more time each side. Relax back to center and bring your arms back down by your sides. So let's warm up the ankles with some heel lifts and then rock back on the heels, lift the toes. Heels lift, toes lift. And you can readjust your feet if you need to take your feet out farther for this one. Heels lifting, toes lifting. Now the placement of your hands can make a difference with your balance. You can take the hands on the sides of the ball. That'll help you hold the ball in place. If you feel pretty good with the movement, you can try hands on the hips. We are gonna be taking those feet and knees all the way into the center. This gets a little more challenging for balance. And then we walk those feet and knees back out. Lifting and lowering heels and toes. Breathing comfortably. And just take a few more. If this bothers the knees at all, just stay with the heel and toe lifts. Don't move the legs in and out. Come on back to center with the feet about hip distance apart. Really firm the abdominals for the knee lifts that are coming up. And again, you might wanna start with hands on the sides of the ball. We're gonna start by lifting the right heel. If you feel fairly stable, go ahead and float that knee up. Lower the foot back down. And you can stay with the heel lifts or you can move into the knee lifts if you feel ready. Keep the abs firm, keep the crown of the head lifting to the ceiling. If you feel fairly stable, you can take hands to the hips. So I'll be moving through progressively more challenging variations of the knee lifts. Just work with the version that works for you today. Breathing comfortably. You can add the arms, one arm reaching out as the opposite knee lifts. You can add arm reaching to the ceiling. Feeling those abdominal muscles work to keep you stable on the ball. You can try same arm, same leg. Just noticing how that changes the balance equation. You can try leg extensions. The leg lifts and extends. Knee bends and comes back down. So you're gonna be holding your balance a little bit longer. You'll start to really feel the muscles in the legs and hips. We'll take one more each side and then an even more advanced variation if you feel ready. The leg extends, bends, and extends without touching the mat again. And we'll take just two more. Last one on this side. Relax the foot down and we'll take four on the other side, extending and then again, moving to whichever position feels right for you today. So maybe it's just the knee lifts or the heel lifts. And lower the foot back down. Next, we'll work on our abdominals. We're gonna take the arms across the chest. I'll show you three different variations of this abdominal exercise. We'll start with variation one, sitting up nice and tall, take a breath in. And as you exhale, you're gonna hinge back at your hip crease, keeping the abs firm. Inhale, back up. Exhale, hinge back at the hip crease, keeping those abdominals firm. Inhale, up. In version number one, the ball doesn't move. Version number two, we're gonna walk our feet slightly forward. We'll be rolling the ball forward as you lean back. Roll the ball back as you come up. Version number three, we're going to start further out on the ball with the ball supporting the lower back. Hands across the chest, exhaling to lower back, inhaling up. Exhale back, inhale up. Now I'm gonna stay here at version three. You work with whichever version works best for you. Exhaling back, really scooping the belly in. Let's add some arm movement, reaching the arms forward. Exhale, lean back. In versions one and three, the ball isn't really moving, it's just staying in place.
Now let's take one arm out to the side as you lean back. Inhale, center. Other arm. Feeling those abdominal muscles get nice and warm. If you find that any of these versions bothers your back at all, try a different variation. And if it doesn't feel right, you might skip this exercise this time and come back to it next time. Last version, we're gonna lift that arm up behind you as you lean back, bring it back to center. Just one more. Come on back to center, walk your feet back in. Sit up nice and tall and you can take a nice stretch for the spine, pushing the tailbone back, lifting the chest, lifting the head and shoulders, and then draw the tailbone in, gently rounding the back. So like a cat-cow in yoga. One more time, gently extending the back and gently rounding. And then come on back to center, relax the shoulders back and down. We'll be on our belly on the ball next. You may want to use a padding for your knees. You can also use a towel or a blanket or a pillow. Just make sure that your knees feel comfortable. We don't stay on our knees for very long, but we will come back to our knees between positions. So let's start by letting the belly relax over the ball, bringing the hands down to the mat, and just take a moment to let your body relax over the ball. Let your neck and shoulders relax. Let your tailbone relax down towards the floor, feeling a nice stretch in your lower back. Try to maintain that sensation of the tailbone reaching down towards the floor. We'll bring our hands to the front of the ball. Keep the shoulders nice and relaxed. As you inhale, we're going to lift the head and the front of the shoulders slightly. Exhale, lower back down. Inhale, lifting the head and shoulders. Exhale, lower back down. I'm going to start to lift a little higher each time. You just progress as you feel comfortable. Try to keep that lengthened feeling in the lower back. So you're not involving the low back on this. You're really trying to strengthen those upper back muscles. Lifting the head and chest, maybe lifting the front of the shoulders. If this feels pretty good to you, you can take the hands off the front of the ball, bring them to the front of the chest as you lift. Elbows stay high, shoulder blades drawing back and down. If this variation feels pretty good, you can take hands to shoulders. A little more involvement of the shoulders and upper back in this variation. Keep the abdominal muscles drawing in away from the ball as you lift. The final version is quite challenging. The hands come behind the head, so you're gonna feel a lot more involvement from the upper back as the head and chest lifts. We'll take just two more, whichever variation you're working with. Last one. And exhale, release the arms to the mat, release the head and chest, and just let your body relax over the ball for a moment. Let's lift the head. We're going to be moving into an all fours position, walking the hands forward slightly, curling the toes under. Take your feet a little wider than the hips and try to get the heels pointing up towards the ceiling. Sometimes our feet tend to want to roll out or roll in on this exercise. If possible, think of the tops of the thighs staying engaged, heels pointing towards the ceiling. One more thing to keep in mind is the positioning of the head and neck. Ideally, you have a nice long back of the neck, shoulders reaching away from the ears. Draw the chin and nose in slightly, lengthening down the back of the neck. Draw the navel in away from your spine. You're going to be lifting one arm up by the ear as you inhale. Exhale, lower the arm down. Just testing your balance on three limbs, reaching up. Exhale down. Let's take the legs next. Lifting up, lowering down. When the leg lifts, keep those abs firm so you don't collapse in the lower back. 
Now, if you feel ready, you can take opposite arm, opposite leg lifting. This is called pointer position. Hold for a moment, feeling your balance, and lower back down. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Feel your hands pushing the floor away from you so the upper body stays nice and engaged through the exercise. Check in with the neck. So the next version of the pointer is a little more challenging. If you feel ready, go ahead and try it. Otherwise, just continue with opposite arm, opposite leg. I'm going to reach the arm and leg up, take the arm out to the side, and bend the knee. Really keep the abdominal muscles drawing in. Extend the arm and leg back to your starting position and place the hand and foot on the mat. And let's try it on the other side. You might find that you have one side that feels a little bit more stable than the other, and that's perfectly normal. Let's take it one more time, each side. And last one. Really keep those abdominals firm. That will help you balance here. and come back to center. Next up are the I's, Y's, and T's. And for this, this exercise, I recommend walking your feet back a little bit so that you have the ball supporting your rib cage. The arms come forward, palms facing one another. Now, if you find that your feet are floating up from the mat, you're gonna wanna walk those feet back even more. Tuck your tailbone in here. Really draw the belly up and in, and you want that nice dorsal glide position, the head lengthened, nose and chin drawing in. Palms are facing one another. We'll reach the arms up towards the ears as you inhale. Exhale, lower down. Just the arms are moving on this exercise. You're going to feel the muscles down the back and sides of the ribs. Let's take one more. This is our eye. Let's take the arms to the width of the mat. These are our Y's. Reaching up, keeping the arms slightly wide as they lift, lowering back down. Try to keep the tops of the shoulders reaching away from the ears as the arms lift. This one is a great postural exercise. You're really gonna feel your upper back muscles on this. Next are the T's. Arms come out to the side and lift. And maybe today you just try one or two of each and work your way up to doing four repetitions of each. Keep breathing. One more T. And relax the arms down. Next up is a more advanced version of the I's, Y's, and T's. I'm going to start with the arms in that I position, but we're going to actually lift one leg away from the mat and you try to keep the leg lifted as you take your eyes. If you're not quite ready for this variation, feel free to keep both feet on the mat. Just take two of each, two eyes, two Y's. And two T's. So the good news is you've completed one leg, but you have another leg. Go ahead and float that leg up, firm the abdominals, and lift those arms when you're ready. Arms into that Y position. Keep the abs firm. Keep the lower back nice and long, just lifting from those lats. And two more of the T's. Last one. Relax the arms, relax the legs. Go ahead and let your body relax over the ball. And then start to come slowly back up. We're going to do a stretch for the lats, taking the palms to the top of the ball. Reach the ball forward as you sit your hips back towards your heels. 
Now make sure this feels comfortable on the shoulders. You don't want to feel any strain as the hips reach back. If this feels pretty comfortable and you feel like you can get a little more stretch in the chest and shoulders and back, reach the ball further out and draw the chest towards the floor. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose and exhale. And start to roll slowly back up. Think of bringing each vertebrae back up, one on top of the other, one at a time. Let your head be the last thing to come up. We'll take that stretch towards one side of your mat, pushing the hips back towards the heels, lowering the chest towards the floor. Take a nice deep breath in into the open side of the ribs. And exhale. Walk the ball back through center, over to the other side of your mat, sitting your hips back. Take a nice deep breath in to the open side of the ribs. And exhale. And walk the ball back to center and roll back up slowly, one vertebrae at a time. Let your head be the last thing to come back up. It's one of the most challenging exercises you can do with the stability ball. It's great for core strength, upper body, really it's a full body exercise, but you want to start slow with the plank and work your way up. You also might want, again, padding under your knees when you start. We're going to bring the belly onto the ball, hands to the floor, extend your legs, and start to walk your hands out just until your feet have lifted off the mat. Now hold here. I've still got my hips on the ball. I'm going to check from my toes to my head what's going on. I'm drawing my inner thighs together. The buttocks are firm. The belly is lifting up and away from the floor. My hands are pushing the floor away. Neck is lengthened. And my chin and nose are drawing slightly in. You may find that this plank position is where you want to stay for a while until you feel strong enough in your core muscles and your upper body. From here, just carefully walk your hands back, lower your feet to the mat, and then come back up. I'm going to show two more variations of the plank. They'll get increasingly more challenging. Only proceed when you feel ready and strong enough. This is a more intermediate level of the plank. I still have my thighs on the ball, but more of my body is off of the ball and unsupported. The arms are pressing firmly into the mat. Legs are squeezing together. Abdominals are drawing up and in. This is a more intermediate version of the plank. Walk the hands carefully back. Bring your feet back to the mat and bend the knees. Next up, I'll show you a more advanced version. If you find that the plank bothers your wrists, you can also come into a forearm plank. Let me show you that first. In the forearm plank, make sure you're not sunk down into the shoulders. Push up through the forearms, lift up through the legs, squeeze the legs together, scoop the belly in. Let your nose move towards your thumbs. This is a nice position to come into if you feel that the plank is too much on your wrists. Carefully come out of the forearm plank, bringing your feet back to the floor, and rest. So let me show you the advanced plank now. Walk the hands out. Now you may want to stop here with the ball under the knees or the shins. You can come further, but I'll stop here for now. And again, less of your body is supported by the ball, so more of your body is going to be have, have to be supported by your arms and your core muscles. From here, if you feel pretty good in this plank position, you can try a single leg lift, floating one leg off the ball at a time. When you're ready to come out of the plank, just
Just walk carefully with the hands back in. Make sure the legs stay glued together until your feet are ready to come back to the mat. And you can relax back on your knees. So next up, we'll do a different variation of the plank. For this, you'll probably want some padding under your knees. We're going to take the hands on top of the ball, lift the chest up, relax the shoulders back and down, tuck your tailbone in. I'll show you two variations. The first is a nice way to modify this exercise. You're going to bend at the hips, lowering the arms onto the ball, lowering the ball forward. When you're ready to come back, lift up through the upper body, coming back up to upright. As you feel more comfortable with the forearm plank, and the rollout, you can take your hips with you to roll back out. Eventually, you'll be able to come into a position where you're in a straight line from the top of your head all the way to your knees. If you feel any tension in your low back when you're doing this, go back to the variation where you have a bend at the hips as you roll out. And also roll to one side of the, ball, the mat, working your oblique abdominals. And finally, the more advanced version, the ball starts a little bit further away. Lower the body towards the ball. From here, hold your plank as you pull your elbows in and press away. Think of pressing the forearms firmly down into the ball so you don't end up sinking into your shoulders. And then when you're ready, pull back up out of your plank position Rest the hands on top of the ball. We're going to reach the ball forward and sit the hips back towards your heels. You can push the ball forward until you feel a comfortable position for your shoulders. Drop the chest towards the floor. Take a nice deep breath in here. And exhale. And another nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, just roll back up one vertebrae at a time. Let your head be the last thing to come back up. And you're done with your planks. So in this section, we're going to use the resistance band. Place the band around your upper back, around the shoulder blades, Bring it under the armpits and go ahead and grab onto either end. And just make sure that as you're doing the exercises, you try to keep your wrist in a neutral position. So try not to let it bend in or out, up or down. You're gonna sit up nice and tall, shoulders relaxed back and down. Reach forward with the arms into the resistance and then bend those elbows back in. Inhale, reaching. Exhale, release. As the arms reach forward, the shoulders have a tendency to want to creep up by the ears. Just try to keep the shoulders relaxed away from the ears. One more. And bring those elbows back in. Let's go ahead and cross the wrists in front of the chest, reaching forward and out. Now take your arms to a slight angle out to the side. So they're not gonna go all the way out to the side. You're gonna leave them open in a wide V shape. Reaching forward and back in. Reaching forward and back in. Sitting up tall, make sure you haven't lost that perfect posture. Just two more. Last one. And come on back to center. Let's give the arms a rest. I'm going to bring the band around the legs. This one gets a little tricky for balance. So if you're just 
starting on the ball, you're not really used to balancing on the ball, you might keep your feet wide for this one. If you're pretty comfortable with the ball, bring the feet, knees, and inner thighs all the way together. Another way to modify is to take the hands to the sides of the ball so you can hold on to the ball while still holding the band in place. Sit up tall for this one. You're going to be moving your thigh, just lifting the leg slightly as we did with the knee lifts earlier. Belly is nice and firm. Feeling your balance. Shoulders relaxed back and down. Just two more. Now we're gonna take that knee lifting and push the thigh out to the side, bring it back to center and lower it down. Same on the other side. Make sure it's actually the thigh that's moving so that you're not creating any torque on the knee. Pushing that thigh into the resistance of the band. One more. And bring the leg back to center. Take the band off the legs. Hold the band about shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit wider. I like to wrap the band at this point so I don't have to grip it with my hands anymore. We're gonna take the arms down by our thighs. Now this exercise will do a warm up version and then we'll add the strengthening part. Inhale, reaching the arms up by your ears. As you exhale, pull your shoulder blades down towards your back pockets. Inhale, releasing the arms. Exhale down, we'll do just one more like that. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, pull the shoulder blades down. Inhale, release. Exhale down, we'll add the strengthening part. Be very careful with your shoulders here. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, bend the elbows, pulling the band wide. Shoulder blades towards the back pockets. Release the band, exhale down. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, bend. Inhale, release. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Exhale, bend. Inhale, release. Exhale down. As you go through this movement, it should feel like it's tough to pull those elbows down, but not so hard that you're feeling strain in the shoulders. One more. And release the arms down. Let's take the band behind you. You want even length of band on either side of you. You're just going to slide your hips right on top of the band. So you'll be sitting on the band. And we're going to take this next exercise without using the band, and then we'll add the band. Elbows in by your sides, sitting up tall. As you exhale, you're going to reach the arms forward, open out to that wide V, elbows pull back in. One more time like that, sitting up tall. Exhale, reach forward. Inhale, open. Exhale, the elbows back in. Let's add the band. Elbows in by your sides. Inhale, sitting up tall. Exhale, reach forward. Inhale, open those arms. Try to keep the arms parallel to the floor as they open. Reaching forward. Inhale, open. Exhale, in. Inhale, sitting up tall. Exhale, reach forward. Inhale, open. Exhale, in. Inhale. Three more. Just two more. And last one. Now let your arms relax for a moment. Version number two gets a little more challenging. We're gonna take the elbows in by the sides. You'll reach forward. This time you'll reach up, lift up tall through the spine, pull the shoulder blades down, open out to that wide V. Elbows come back in. Let's take it one more time without the band. Reaching forward, reaching up, shoulder blades pull down, open out to that wide V. Elbows come back in. So let's try it with the band. You might want to leave a little bit less tension on the band this time, just until you understand how your back and shoulders will react. 
elbows in by your side, sitting up nice and tall. Exhale, reach the arms forward. Inhale, stretch the arms up, shoulder blades pull down, reach out to the sides, elbows back in. Reaching forward and up, reaching out, elbows in. So this one is great for the back muscles. Keep the abs drawing in as the arms reach up so there's no chance of you arching your back on this. Try to stay neutral. Three more. Just two more. And the last one. Bring your elbows back in, release the band, and relax. In this section, we'll be standing using the ball. Now, if you have shoulder or back issues, you may consider setting the ball aside, doing the exercises first without the ball, and then adding the ball when you're ready. We'll start with some balance. Bring your feet about hip distance apart, relax the ball at your belly. We'll float one foot forward, tapping the toe, then out to the side, back behind, side again, to the front, and back in. Let's switch sides, just getting the feet before we add the arms. Keep those abdominals nice and firm, and keep your standing leg really engaged. So let's add the arms. Reach forward when the foot taps forward. Reach up as the leg goes side. Reach forward bringing the leg back. Reach up as the leg goes side. And reach forward again. Come on back in and let's take it on the other side. Breathing comfortably through the exercise. Let your shoulders relax down when the arms reach up. Feel free to continue with the toe tapping down or float the foot in the air as you travel. And let's take it on the other side. Relax those arms. Next up, we'll take lateral steps. Reach the ball forward as you step out. Lower the ball as you step in. Just moving side to side. Relax your shoulders as the arms lift. This can be great work for the arms using the ball, but you want to make sure you keep those shoulders relaxed. Let's take one more each side. Now you have the option of taking this into a knee bend. As you step out, the knees bend, push your hips back. Step back to center. Keep those abs firm as you step into your knee bend. If this bothers your knees at all, go back to the lateral step with the legs straight, the knees soft. Let's take one more. Come on back to center. Now let's take our feet out one more time. Bend the knees. We're going to hold here. If your shoulders will tolerate it, take those arms up overhead. Lift one heel. Lower it back down. Lift the other heel and lower. Keep it comfortable on the knees. You'll feel those quadricep muscles working. Keep the shoulder blades relaxed down towards your back pockets and breathe. Now if this feels pretty, pretty good, your ankles feel stable, go ahead and lift both heels at the same time. If that feels like it's maybe more advanced than you want to attempt today, go back to singles. 
You can always come back to the doubles. We'll take one more. Release the heels, relax the legs, relax the arms. Let's bring our feet back together. Next up is our lunge position. We'll start with the arms relaxed in. Step your right foot back, reach the arms forward. Inhale, step center. Let's stay on that right side. Step it back, step center. On the next four, feel free to just bring that foot to the toes when you come to center. On the next four, feel free to lift the knee to center. Hold for a moment, place that foot back. And on this last one, just set the arm and leg down. Let's take left side, other side, arms come in, reach the foot back, inhale, center. On the next four, feel free just to tap the toes in, challenging your balance. On the next four, feel free to lift that knee to center. And just lower the foot and arms. Our final standing exercise will be the diagonal pull down. Take your feet a little wider than the hips, reach the arms up to one side, shift your weight, pulling the ball in towards your knee. Step the arms and legs out. Bring to center and step out. Reaching the arms across the body. Feeling that nice stretch in the shoulders. Last one. Sweep those arms through center. Let's take it to the other side. Reaching up, shift your weight. Last one. And relax the arms back down. Bring your feet back together, and you're ready for the next section. With your back resting comfortably on the mat and your legs on the ball, let your arms relax by your sides and let the front of the chest relax nice and open. Take a deep breath in through the nose, and as you exhale, press your legs down into the ball and let your hips and spine float up. Start small at first. You can work up to higher bridges as we advance. Take a breath in. Exhale, lower the spine and hips. Inhale at the bottom. Exhale, press the hips and spine up. Inhale at the top. Exhale, lower the spine and hips down. Try to keep the shoulders relaxed. Inhaling to prepare. Exhale, press the legs down, float the hips up. Now let your legs extend out in front of you, drawing the inner thighs together, straightening through the tops of the thighs. Take a breath in. Exhale, lower slowly back down. Inhale at the bottom. Exhale, press up into your bridge, lengthening through the top of the thighs. Inhale at the top, exhale, lower back down. Now you may prefer to stay here with the ball close in, supporting the backs of the knees. As you advance, you can push the ball a little bit further. It's going to create more challenge for your core muscles. It'll be harder to stabilize on the ball. Let's go ahead and straighten the legs, take a breath in. 
Exhale, firm the abdominals, firm the buttocks. Press the hips and spine up. Keep your tailbone tucked in. If you feel ready to do single leg work, proceed from here with me. Otherwise, just hold your bridge position. We're going to take one leg reaching up towards the ceiling. Stabilize through your standing leg. Lower the leg to the ball. Reposition the hips and pelvis if they've started to drop. When you're ready, lift the other leg. Pressing firmly down with the standing leg and lower the leg back to the ball. Let's try that one more time each side. Take your time with the movement. If you notice the hips starting to drop a little in your bridge, reestablish your bridge position before proceeding. Now let's take it one more time. This is a more advanced movement still. I'm going to reach the leg up and take small circles. This creates additional challenge for those core muscles. And then reverse the circles. Bring the leg back to the ball. Reestablish the bridge if the hips have dropped. Float that other leg up. Carefully circling. Circle from the thigh, so make sure it doesn't become an ankle circle. And let's reverse those circles. And bring the leg back to the ball and lower carefully down out of your bridge. Take a moment to rest. Let the shoulders relax. Let your arms relax. Take a breath in. As you exhale, we're going to press back up into that bridge position, keeping the abdominals firm, buttocks firm. And again, this is an advanced exercise. You might want to watch it first and then try it. We're going to cross one ankle over the opposite ankle. Hold here for a moment. Feeling your stability, uncross the legs. Let's try the other side. Try it one more time, each leg. Go at your own pace. Try to keep the pelvis level and the hips lifted throughout the movement. And when you have both legs back on the ball, just lower carefully back down. Take a moment to rest. Let the shoulders relax. Let the arms relax. We have one more exercise. I'll show you two different variations using this bridge position. We're going to start with the knees pulled in towards you. Take a breath in. Exhale, press the legs away. Lift up into your bridge position. Inhale at the top. Exhale, lower back down. Pull the knees in. Inhale, press away. Exhale, lift up. Inhale at the top. Exhale, lower down. Draw the knees in. So I'm going to move to a more advanced version, pressing the legs away, lifting up into the bridge, holding the bridge position as you draw the knees in, holding the bridge position as you extend the legs out. If this feels like too much for you, Bring the hips down after the legs extend out and pull the knees in with the hips and back on the mat. Just take a few more. Try to keep the pelvis level in the movement, really feeling the hamstrings on this version of the bridge. We'll take just two more, drawing the knees in and pressing away. And one more, knees in and press away, and go ahead and lower the hips and spine back to the mat. Relax the shoulders, relax the knees. Heel taps are next. For the heel taps, you'll want the ball pushed fairly far away from you, so just the lower part of the calves and backs of the ankles are on the ball. Flex your feet gently. You want to try to keep your thighs straight, your legs straight for this, your abdominals drawn in, and you want to stay really stable through the pelvis. Don't let your hips rock side to side. We're going to take the right leg, lower it down the right side of the ball, just lightly tap the heel, bring the leg back up. Same on the left side, lowering down a light tap and bring the leg back up. This is a fairly simple exercise, but it's very hard to keep the pelvis stable. You might even bring the hands to the front of the pelvis 
just to notice whether you're feeling any movement in the pelvis. Really keep the abdominals scooped in. You might also try sliding the hands under the small of the back and pressing the low back into the hands as you move the legs. Let's take one more each side. Breathing comfortably. Now let's take just the right leg. Lower it halfway down the ball or so and hold four, three, two, one, and lift that right leg back up. Stay on the right side, lower halfway down, hold four, three, two, one, bring it back up. Let's take two more. Hold four, three, two, one. Last one on the right. Hold four, three, two, one. Bring it back up. Let's try the left side, lowering halfway down, hold four, three, two, one, and lift back up. Really stay firm through the abdominals. Four, three, two, one, and back up. Two more like that. Last one. Bring the left leg back up. We have one more in the heel tap series. Lower the right leg all the way to the mat. Scoop the belly in. Float the right leg halfway up. Hold four, three, two, one, and lower back down. And again, lift, hold four, three, two, one, and lower. Two more like that, keeping the abs drawn in. Let float the leg, four, three, two, one, and lower down. Last one on the right, four, three, two, one, lower the leg down. Carefully bring that right leg back onto the ball, keeping the abs firm, lower the left leg. Float the left leg up halfway, hold four, three, two, one, and lower down. And again, lift, hold four, three, two, one, and lower down. Two more like that. Keep those abs firm, really drawing in. Two, one, and lower down. Last one. Hold four, three, two, one, and lower down. Bring that left leg all the way back up onto the ball. Relax your arms by your sides. Pull the ball in towards you. For these next exercises, we'll be holding the ball in the hands with our feet on the mat. If you're dealing with shoulder issues or back issues, you may prefer to set the ball aside and do these exercises first without the ball. Take the ball, reach it up towards the ceiling, take a breath in, as you exhale, reach the arms back by your ears. Inhale the ball to the ceiling. Exhale, reach the arms back. Inhale to the ceiling. As you reach the arms back, try to keep the ribs drawing together and down. Don't let those ribs pop up. Inhale to the ceiling. Exhale one more time back by your ears. Inhale to the ceiling. As you exhale, take your arms over to the side. Try to keep the torso parallel. Don't let the torso tilt. Bring the arms center. Exhale, ball to the other side. And center. One more each direction. Now bring the arms back to center. We're going to do some work for the abdominals. As you inhale, firm the abdominals, float your right knee up. As you exhale, really keep those abs firm, float your left knee up. Inhale the right foot down, exhale left foot down. Let's take that again. Inhale, right knee up, then left knee, right foot, left foot. One leg at a time, firming the abdominals as the leg lifts. Try to avoid letting your lower back Move around a lot. You want to try to keep it in neutral as the knees lift. I'm going to be progressing through these exercises. They'll get more and more challenging. Feel free to come back to the pistons, as I call them, if you find that the additional exercises create too much tension in your back. Next up are our toe taps. The knee floats up, the other knee floats up, and we take one foot at a time 
down towards the mat. Now you can modify the toe taps by bending at the knee, sending the toes closer to the bottom. That's going to make this a little bit easier on the abdominals, or you can keep the knees at that 90 degree angle, creating more challenge for your abdominal muscles. If this feels pretty good to you, you can add the arm movements. As the foot taps forward, the arms reach partly back. Everything comes back to center. And another fun variation to try, the arms move side as the leg taps down. And still more advanced is single leg stretch. The knee comes in, the opposite leg reaches forward, and you switch out. You can take percussive breathing with this, taking a quick inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale, you can also add arm movement. You can take the arms side to side. One more set, whichever variation you're doing. And bring your feet one at a time back to the mat. Relax your arms. We'll take one more exercise with the arms reaching to the ceiling. Lift your right knee as you inhale, left knee as you exhale, and we'll take the ball to the top of the shins. Now, if you find that the ball rolls away, you can do this exercise without the ball. You might have to hook your feet around the ball a little bit. Take the hands behind the thighs, and we'll draw the knees in towards the chest as you inhale. Exhale, press the thighs into the hands. Inhale, draw the knees in. Exhale, press away, scooping the belly in as the legs move. If you feel comfortable with this exercise, you can take hands to the sides. Just make sure that you're not getting a lot of movement in your pelvis and back. You wanna to try to stay really stable through the pelvis, keeping those abdominals drawing in. Feel free to continue with this exercise or move on to the more advanced version. We're gonna take the ball, grab it, bring it between the calves, Squeeze the calves together, bend the knees, lowering the ball towards the mat as the arms reach back behind you. Go ahead and grab the ball as the legs reach to the ceiling, bring the legs together, bend the knees, lower the arms back. We'll take just one more like that. Bring the ball back into the hands. Bring the legs back together. Lower your feet to the mat one at a time. Relax your arms. Let's take the legs on top of the ball for some stretches. Go ahead and let one leg relax on the ball. Draw the opposite knee in towards your chest. You can grab on behind the thigh or in front of the shin, whatever's more comfortable for your knee. Circle that right ankle, big slow circles. And reverse. When you're ready, extend the right leg to the ceiling for the hamstring stretch. You can grab on anywhere behind the thigh for support. Try to let your tailbone relax towards the mat. Let your neck and shoulders relax. Take a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, let that right knee bend. 
cross the right ankle in front of the left thigh. Feel free to relax here in the figure four stretch. You can also draw the left thigh a little closer in towards you, increasing the stretch in the hip and buttocks on the opposite side. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, release the legs, uncross them, and let's bring the opposite knee in towards the chest. Circling that ankle. And reverse the circles. Extend the leg to the ceiling when you're ready. In the hamstring stretch, especially if you have tight hamstrings, your knee may not end up straight in this position. You might have to bend that knee a little bit. The leg might be a little farther away from you. Just find the position that allows you to feel the stretch in the belly of the hamstring and hold. Take a breath in, and as you exhale, let that knee release, cross the ankle in front of the thigh. Feel free to relax here in figure four, or you can draw that thigh a little closer in towards your chest. Just make sure that the hip and knee on the side you're stretching feel comfortable with this movement. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, release the legs. Let them relax on the ball. Let your shoulders relax. And just take a moment here to think about your workout, think about your muscles. Take a moment before you come to a seated or standing position. 